Hello everybody, my name is Mircea Thomas. We're going to be working together this semester. I would have been so glad to be able to see you as well, but uh, be it as it may, we're going to continue our discussions online. Let's begin with the limits of interpretation. Uh, this is a very important aspect of uh, fiction. Obviously, uh, the author is going to tell us between the lines, so to speak, and the question remains, how can we figure out what the author is actually telling us? Now, based on what I have seen on the discussion boards, most people would go, fiction is made up, therefore the interpretation can go every which way, and everybody is entitled to their opinion, which is fine. We can test this very, very easily to see whether we truly have as many interpretations as we have in terms of readers. For instance, for the story of an hour, take the ending in which Mrs. Mallard dies. And of course, Kate Chopin doesn't tell us specifically what the reasons or the cause of her death uh, may be. It's all open to interpretation. Now, suppose that we have 25 people in this class, give or take, Based on this theory, we should have 25 different interpretations. So Mrs. Mallard had died because of a heart attack, because of the joy that kills, because of disappointment, because she had a weak heart. I haven't been able to glean more than that, but we can add to it, of course, uh, suicide, for instance. Or she was murdered, even because of COVID, because of cancer. Now, obviously, not all interpretations are equal. If you take a possible interpretation that she was killed by aliens from planet Zorg, that <laughs> doesn't really hold water. Or if you go, she drowned. That, again, doesn't work. You might say that a good interpretation has to be anchored in the text, and an interpretation such as she was eaten by the bad, bad wolf doesn't work because there are no details in the text suggesting that the bad, bad wolf is part of the picture. But what are we supposed to do with the ones that are anchored in the text? For instance, joy that kills. It appears in the final paragraph. Or she had a weak heart, which appears in the first paragraph. Or she was disappointed, which appears somewhere in the middle. And Still, some of these interpretations are at odds. You can put them together and you can say that she died because of a roller coaster of emotions. At first, she was really disappointed, then she was really happy, and then she was disappointed again. But still, it is very doubtful that we would be able to come up with 25 different possible causes for her death let alone the fact that probably the story of an hour has been read by more than 25 people. Even if we take such an interpretation as suicide. Now, some people might say here, well, suicide is not mentioned in the text itself. The ultimate test should be the text itself. So let's have a look over the story of an hour, and especially around paragraph uh, 18. Now you can see in paragraph 18, Louise Mallard, she's in her room, and her nosy sister is knocking on the door. Louise opened the door. I beg you to open the door, you will make yourself ill. What are you doing? 
Louis responds, go away, I'm not making myself ill. No. She was drinking in the very elixir of life through that open window. This sentence is somehow surprising. The author mentions the elixir of life. Could we say that actually Kate Chopin means here poison? Try to imagine the situation. Louise Mallard is obviously unhappy. She has already planned her getaway by sort of hiding some poison outside the window because, of course, she has a nosy sister and she doesn't want her sister to come across this file of hemlock or arsenic. When the news of her husband's death is beginning to sink in, Louise opens the window, she takes out the file, and she drinks the poison because she wants to be reunited with her husband in the afterlife. Now that is food for thought. Why wouldn't suicide be a reasonable interpretation? And if it's suicide, then the weak heart plays no part in this equation. The other possibility, which is really intriguing, is that this is murder. Now, many people would go, there is no mention in the story about any kind of murderous activities. But look at it this way. We have in the story a very interesting character who seems to be in control of all the information. That is, of course, Richard seems to be a friend of the family. He's the one who receives the news of Brentley Mallard's death in paragraph 1 and 2. And he's the one who controls the information. Could it be imagined that actually Richards already knows that Mrs. Mallard has a weak heart and that it's enough to produce some sort of a moment of confusion when her weak heart is going to give out and she brought this fake news saying, oh, you know, your husband has died in a train wreck. And then Richard simply stood back and enjoyed the events which unfold on their own. In the end, at the appointed time, of course, Brentley Mallard comes home, as usual. He opens the door, upon which Louise sees this person coming back from the dead, and she dies in her turn. Now, we might imagine a future trial and investigation or something like this. No jury in this world would convict Richards of any kind of shady activities. It was an honest mistake. He double-checked. It seemed to him that the name was on the list. He came back home and he gave this news uh, uh, to uh, Louis and to her sister as well. Now, many readers would go, well, wait a minute, this doesn't quite work. I mean, what is the reason for such a crime? You need to have a motive, right? Uh, okay, but it could be argued that actually in a crime story, the reasons are not obvious, and the answer is not obvious, because otherwise that would kill the pleasure of discovering the guilty part. We can say that actually Richards, you know, had a personal interest in, in Brentley Mallard himself. This is 19th century, you know, 
a gay couple was not well viewed. And so the wife was in the way. She had to be eliminated. And then all of a sudden, the possibility that this is the story of a crime, the crime of the century, because it's a perfect crime, all of a sudden this interpretation appears as a serious contender to the possible ones. It may not be an interpretation such as Arab terrorists shot her, but it could be a crime as well. How are we to tell? As you guys pointed out, each of us readers come to the table with their own personal experience, which are all different. But one wonders if the ultimate interpretation really depends on our personal experience. Of course, I come from a former communist regime. You probably were able to tell that based on my accent. I have plenty of personal experience with a Romanian secret police. However, I will never interpret this story as Mrs. Mollard was executed by the Romanian secret police. It just doesn't work. So how are we to tell which one is the better one? Of course, we cannot actually vote on it, especially since everybody is going to have a different interpretation. It has become clear by now that even there might be differences in uh, details and nuances. There are not, the number of interpretations is not endless. It's not even the same as the number of readers. Some readers might go along the same line. Of course, their interpretation is not going to follow each other as templates because we're not clones, we're not robots. But in the main, the interpretations are going to go in a certain direction. If you think about it, there are many more wrong interpretations that don't fit than right ones, but we don't even think about them because <laughs> they are obviously wrong. So let's keep this in mind. In terms of the right interpretation, what matters here is not so much my experience based on what I have lived in the past, but my experience with a type of writing the author has specialized in. For instance, uh, literature comes in different genres. Uh, you might want to think of it like the genres in music. There is blues, there is uh, country, there is classic rock, there is classical music, there is hip hop. Now each genre comes with its own inbuilt conventions. If you go to a rap concert, you're not going, well, we don't go to a concert nowadays anymore, but if you're going to kind of open a rap clip, you're not going to see a bagpipe. It just doesn't work there. Bagpipes don't jive with the hip hop. There's going to be something else. There's going to be a special beat that's going to go on. The conventions of the genre are going to be different. The same thing for folk music or for country music or bluegrass. Each comes with its own inbuilt rules. What is really interesting is that even if you stick to the words on the page, that is not enough. Something else is part of this equation. Now imagine that this story has been written by Tana French, who's famous for her Dublin murder series, or by Agatha Christie. If the author had been a person specializing in murder mysteries, then the right interpretation would have certainly been murder. Or imagine, for instance, that this was actually written by uh, Stephen King. If the author is Stephen King, the same words on the page would mean something else. Look at the end of the story. 
someone was opening the front door with a latch key. It was Brantley Mallard who entered a little travel stained, carrying composedly and stiffly his backpack and his umbrella. The image is different. All of a sudden, Brantley Mallard comes back from the dead like a zombie. And this applies even to an earlier fragment. Uh, paragraph 10. Have a look over paragraph 10. Now her bosom rose and fell tumultuously. She was beginning to recognize this, this thing that was approaching to possess her and she was striving to beat it back with her will. As powerless as the two white slender hands would have been. What was it? Not know. It was too subtle and too elusive to name, but she felt it creeping out of the sky, reaching out towards her, through the sounds, the sense, the color that filled this air. This is Stephen King. And so what's creeping out of the sky is obviously some sort of an entity coming from beyond the grave. See, the same words on the page might have a different value depending on who wrote the story. Interpretation is not so much affected by the reader's past experience, but the reader's experience with the conventions of the genre. The conventions of the genre the author happens to be writing in. From a different perspective, if any interpretation is as good as any other, what is the purpose of this course? So I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. Go ahead and post them on the discussion board. Thank you.